let me ask you, Leah, uh, what, what is criminal behavior to you? It's any behavior that deviates from the social norms of society, and uh, it falls under a huge category of uh, behaviors, such as violent behavior or, um, you know, anything with aggression, basically, and then, you know, breaking the uh, criminal code of society. Okay, very good. So, um, what is your opinion about all this? I, I agree completely with Leah. Uh, I think it's all about um, what society views as normal or our codes and any deviance away from that, which could put someone at risk for, um, you know, antisociality or something along those lines. Okay. So, let me ask Farron. What do we mean by the uh, biopsychosocial causes of criminal behavior? It's kind of a mouthful. It is. It's a big word. And so, Dr. Gade, as we've been saying, I like calling you Dr. Gade. Normally, I call That's you fine. professor. I'm going to call you Dr. Gade the whole time now. <laughs> so, criminal behavior is very complex. We tend to a lot in our society. We like to have one word answers for things or be able to specifically identify what causes something. Whereas we can't really do that with criminal behavior. There's many disciplines that go into just beginning to understand what it's about. So we say it has biopsychosocial causes, which you can kind of break that apart. It's biology, psychology, and sociology. It's not just the individual mind, it's the individual mind as well as the people around the person, their demographics, as well as their genetics and all that stuff that goes into it. So that's what we mean when we talk about biopsychosocial causes. Okay, that sounds very comprehensive. Okay. And uh, what are the risk factors? They talk about risk factors, protective factors. Uh, right. Shari, maybe you can tell us. Okay, so a risk factor is anything that could put increase the risk of uh, deviant or criminal behavior in a child. So this ranges from, you know, um, discordant home life. Um, it can be a lack of supervision. Single parent homes are risk factors. Um, so there's okay. a broad broader range. Broad range. Yeah. And um, <coughs> what kind of uh, supervision do you think children need, Leah? Well, uh, definitely supervision. It's a huge palace for certain disorders and maladaptive behaviors to occur in children. And the big thing that parents need to know is that kids need to be well supervised or they will then try to stimulate themselves in different ways and get um, attention in other Forms, which could be anything ranging from arson, vandalism, and drugs if they're not being, uh, you know, properly supervised. So parental attention is very important. Absolutely. And then, uh, Fallon, we talk about ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What does this have to do with the eventual development of criminal behavior? Well, for those of you that don't really know what ADHD is, it's basically characterized by three main things, which is impulsivity, inattentiveness, and excessive motor activity. So this makes it very difficult for the child to kind of fit into the box we want them to fit into, to go to school, to sit down, to do what they have to do. So it's important in terms of criminal behavior because it tends to make them separated from school life. So if they're not given the proper accommodations, they'll end up feeling bad about themselves, they'll want to do something else that makes them feel good. Possibly, again, drugs or gangs, other things we'll keep going back to. And again, there's many things that go into creating criminal behavior, but up to 45% of men in prisons and jails have some form of ADHD, and about 18.5% of female prisoners in jail. So either way, it's an important factor to look at just because of all the different issues it can cause in a child if they're not given the proper way to channel their energy. I see. That's true. And, uh, you know, they also talk about other kinds of mental disorders which, uh, which are very important when we talk about the development of criminality, like uh, conduct disorder, oppositional defiant disorder. What exactly is that? Uh, so, conduct disorder is a persistent, repetitive, pathological misbehavior and a lack of concern for others beyond a normal level that may be seen in a developing child. Oppositional Defiant Disorder, also known as Disruptive Behavior Disorder, is characterized uh, as people with an intense problem with authority that possess negative, hostile, and defiant behaviors. So as we've been talking about, this can develop from 
a lack of attention and support from your authority figure or that parental figure. And so that's why it's very important to, you know, maintain in tune with, with the child as they develop and grow. Certainly it's. And our question for you, Leah, for our audience, mm -hmm. uh, they talk about attachment in children. They talk about secure attachment, insecure attachment. What exactly is that all about? Well, secure attachment involves uh, a child's, their, their needs are being met by the parent. Now, uh, insecure attachments are when the child's needs are not being met. And this can lead to a uh, path of criminality or antisocial behaviors later down in life because um, uh, just being insecurely attached with your parent can then lead to being insert, uh, insecurely attached with people all down your life. So it, it's a, a very consistent thing throughout someone's life, and it's very hard to change someone who's been insecurely attached. So it's very important for children to develop some kind of a trustful relationship with their parents. Absolutely. And then a trustful relationship with anybody uh, down the line, any authority figure, mm -hmm. especially. And uh, what, what happens to children who are not securely attached to them? When children are not securely attached, it's difficult for them because, like Leah's saying, they kind of form this working model in their heads that everyone's out to get them, people won't be able to meet their needs, so they don't tend to go down the normal path of get a job, do this, because they don't trust the authority figures in that. So, for example, a large number of sex offenders have been found to have insecure attachment, either avoidant or anxious, so that's how it all can kind of work together. Mm -hmm. You guys bring up such an interesting topic of discussion. I know Fallon, actually, we got a little history here. I, I know, I came in and I was like, I know you. Yeah, I bring my Prosper class to Caliber Absolutely. We're over at Delphi. Monday. Yeah, so we start Monday. So uh, you do outstanding work in, at Adelphi and all you girls. I'm looking for. I don't know if you guys are part of Caliber, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to see. Monday, you're going to be telling me what to do on Monday. Exactly, basically. We'll just switch the tables here. Okay, but unfortunately, right now, we're kind of out of time. Of course. And you, I want you guys to come back, and I know you guys are connected with Caliber and Dr. Gabe and the wonderful work that he does, and, and I welcome you guys back when we have much more time. And uh, this information is so important. Doctor? And I just want to thank you all for coming, and we'll figure out the time with Steve as to when you guys are coming back soon. Okay, so we can continue this yeah. and related topics. Thank awesome. you very, very much. Thank, very you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you so much. And we are, uh, have a few minutes left in this show, and we have Samantha that's going to uh, come up. We're going to take a uh, quick break here for one minute, and uh, we're going to line up Samantha. Okay, Brian? Oh, <laughs>